Greetings to another video. Today we're going to talk all about commuting to work and never underestimate this because it can save you time, save you money and for me commuting to and from work built literally all of my base fitness and I would say the majority of my weight loss came just from commuting. So I'm going to go over some like hacks slash excuses that people give for not commuting and I want to just help share my experience with it and what's worked for me. So the first one is showering. And I think one of the main excuses is just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna be really sweaty when I get to work. Like, I, oh, I don't wanna rock up and then have to be like, not be able to have a shower. So a couple of different things you can do. One thing is set off earlier or just ride a little bit slower. So you're not like gassing it full pell all the way to work. So you get there and you are really sweaty. Just take it steady. That's what I used to do when I first started riding. So have a look at gyms near where you work. Can you ride to the gym and then get ready there and then just ride like the short distance to like wherever you work. Failing that, just good old wipes or just take like a flannel and a towel and just kind of have like a, a sink shower at work. The next thing is carrying stuff. So if you've got a laptop to carry, you've got loads of clothes, or you're just like, oh, I can't turn up and have like clothes shoved in my bag that'll be all crumpled. What I would say is, can you go once a week in the car and just take, or on the train or whatever, and take your week's worth of clothes in one go? I mean, or, or riding potentially, like with them all and just leave them there. Backpacks are good if you don't have a lot to take. So I'd take a backpack, say if I just wanted to take my dinner, and like a notepad or something, or I was a journalist, that's why I mentioned the notepad. Um, because I feel like having a backpack with a lot of weight, it definitely does make you sweatier. So if you have got a lot to take, like such as a laptop, I would highly recommend getting pannier racks. They just take the weight off you and just make it a lot more comfier to get to and from work and you can carry a lot more in panties. The next one is weather. This is a massive excuse like, oh, it's raining, oh, it's too cold invest in really, really good waterproof jacket. It doesn't need to necessarily be a cycling specific one, but just get one good, I mean, you need a good rain jacket anyway and just wear that. I definitely recommend Patagonia. I love their rain jacket. Um, what I would also suggest is, and it's very expensive and I don't think they make them anymore, is the Gore Shake Dry. It's really, really thin. And I wouldn't wear a backpack with either waterproof jackets though, because I think it rubs off the, the waterproofness. Always have lights. As soon as you get to work, start charging them. Have just a backup light as well. Even if you're riding in the day, I just feel like riding through traffic, more built up areas. I just think I generally ride with lights all the time now anyway. The ones that I really like, they're really small. They The battery lasts really well and they're really bright. Um, are the exposure and they're called Trace and Trace R. Love those lights, really small, compact. You don't even know that you've got them on. They're so, so light. I'll leave a link to those below. The next one is where do I put my bike? There's nowhere to store it. Like, is it safe? What do I actually do with my bike? So the obvious, most safest place to put your bike is in your workplace. And I feel like now with sustainability that a lot of companies are offering that as an option. However, if they don't, I've got some solutions uh, of different locks. And I would say the main thing is I would always overlock your bike than underlock it. I go into Manchester and I see bikes just chained up with like little thin cable locks. I'm like, no. First one is from Hiplock. It's a Z-lock, which I really like. So this is just a steel zip tie basically. And I would use that to lock my wheel to my frame. So this is gonna be like, this is like a secondary lock. Or I actually take this if I'm ever gonna go on a train somewhere. So if you're commuting part way and you go on a train, I always like having this as an extra little bit of security just to, to attach it to the train so no one can just kind of jump off with your bike. So that's the main kind of small one. I've used these for years. I also use them on odd axes or long distance because they're so small, they're so light. I know a lot of you will be like, oh, but you can just snip through them. This is like, you choose what kind of lock you want to use, but I use it just as like a quick thing to stop opportunities. These. So the main one that I would use, I would probably use a D-lock if I was in a city center. And I would actually, because they're so heavy and quite hard to carry, I would leave that actually where I'm gonna lock my bike. So I'll just leave it. And then the, the lock that I would kind of take in and out of work, this is actually really clever. So Hiplock have just released a new lock, which is called Switch. So this is a folding lock. It is, it's just over a kilo. So these are six hardened steel bars that link together to give you like a 85 centimeter locking link. So if, say for example, if you've got an e-bike, 
or you've got a, a bigger area that you need to get your lock around, this is ideal for it. This is bronze sold secure, so they come in different levels, but this is a bronze version. But what I really like about it is the ease of transporting it. So, and that's one of the main reasons that I don't always take locks with me because I'm like, I just, they're just heavy and hard to transport. Whereas this one, it, so it basically folds down, you put it in like its little holder and you can attach that to your frame on the water bottle mount. However, they come up with a better solution so that when you actually want to take it off and use your water bottle, instead you can. So it comes with like a little plate that you would attach your water bottle to and then you just switch them in and out. So if you're someone that commutes, but also uses that same bike to go on like club rides or goes just on another ride where you don't want to take the lock and you want like two water bottles, then that's ideal. So the next one is traffic. And I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable riding when there's like rush hour, for example. What I would say is when I started, I felt this exact same way, but actually riding it, it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. So just bear that in mind. However, you've got to feel comfortable with the route that you're taking. And that brings me on to planning like a couple of different route options. So you don't always have to go on the main roads, there's gonna be other ways. And I would say use either Garmin Connect or Strava to create those routes because they're using data from people actually ride. They're using, the, I guess, the most popular roads that other cyclists use. So that's another way of maybe trying to find a better way into work. So the last one, I know it's gonna be controversial, but it's what I do, so I'm gonna be honest. And it's kind of making the time on the commute a little bit more fun. And I do that by listening to an audiobook, podcast, or music. However, hear me out, I don't recommend using like in, in I can't even say, in-ear headphones, because it, you can't hear anything around you, the traffic and stuff. However, and I've, I have um, used these for years now. They are actually a sponsor this year, um, and that is Shocks. So these are like open hit. I can't even say it, open ear headphones. So basically, let me show you. So they sit on the outside of your ear, so you can still hear traffic, can you see? So you can still hear traffic, and I don't have them loud, it's just something kind of like just in a little bit of the in the background you don't even tell that you've got them on they're wireless so they're not going to get yanked out and i definitely recommend these also they have actually got a discount coming up for the amazon prime if you're watching this and it's an old video it won't be but there's a discount code that i have in the description um but yeah if you're watching this now i think it's the 11th of 12th of july they've got um an amazon deal so you have always wanted them i think there's like up to 30 percent off them so i'll leave a link to that below if you've got any commuting tips leave them in the comments below. The more people we have commuting, the more people we have on the roads, the more governments and councils have to provide us cycling infrastructure to make it easy. So I always felt like when I was commuting, I'm like, it might be a bit hard in traffic. It might be a little bit scary at first, but I want to be a positive change and I want to be one of the numbers on the road to hopefully encourage better cycling infrastructure for future people to ride to work on. On that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next video.